Welcome to Emmanuel Church Marlborough. Thank you for joining in. My name is Reuben. I serve as the pastor here. Please do grab a Bible. That will help you and it will help me. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I thought of beginning with a light bulb joke. You know, like how many Englishmen does it take to change a light bulb? Actually, there are some great light bulb jokes about different Christian denominations. Uh, typical answer is change. But before I found anybody, I thought I'd leave those. Actually, our need for light is no laughing matter, is it? Maybe for lots of people, life feels dark, especially in these times. Maybe we feel the darkness emotionally. Uh, we're grieving or sorrowful. Maybe we feel the darkness mentally. Uh, we're stressed or confused. Maybe we feel darkness spiritually. Um, we feel we're losing the battle against sin. And we need to hear Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. We're spending the summer looking at the seven times in John's Gospel in the Bible that Jesus says, I am. Uh, last week, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Today, he says, I am the light of the world. We're in John's Gospel, chapter eight. Uh, we've been standing with Jesus in the festival of tents in Jerusalem. The festival of tents sounds like, like Glastonbury. It's not. Um, they were celebrating how God had rescued them from slavery in Egypt hundreds of years before. And how God had brought them through the desert in tents to the promised land. And apparently in that festival, they would have had lots of lights, uh, perhaps even some men dancing, carrying blazing torches. Sounds a bit risky. And imagine in that context, there's Jesus in some high up place, perhaps the light flickering on his face. And he cries out in a loud voice. I'm holding a little light. No, he doesn't. He cries out in a loud voice. I am a little light. No, he doesn't. Jesus cries out in a loud voice, I am the light of the world. It's a huge claim. What does Jesus mean? Why should we believe him? Those are the questions we'll ask now. Let's see first, what does Jesus mean? We're in John chapter 8 and verse 12. Won't you look with me? John chapter 8 verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What does Jesus mean? I am the light of the world. He explains what he means in the second half of the verse. He says that John 8 verse 12, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let's take those one at a time. Jesus said, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Imagine you wake in the night. It's dark. Uh, maybe you need to comfort a small child or go to the loo and you scrabble around for light. That's what you need, isn't it? Uh, you need a torch or a lamp or just your phone or some way of getting light to show you the way. How much more in life? The famous psalm says god's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path whoever follows jesus will never walk in darkness and maybe we haven't always followed jesus because maybe actually sometimes we quite like the darkness when i turn on the light i don't always like what i see maybe um it's near the end of the week at nearly the time to clean the bathroom, I go into the bathroom, turn on the light. I don't always like what I see. And Jesus said in John chapter three, light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Isn't there darkness in the news? And is there darkness sometimes in our hearts and minds? Darkness that we'd actually quite like to cover up, that we'd be ashamed of should you shine a light on it but what would happen if we were to turn the sun off 
immediately every plant would start to die and when the food source is gone the animals would die within a week the average temperature of the oceans would be minus 20 degrees they would freeze and life would die and if we turn off the son of god jesus the light of the world well jesus will say later in verse 21 of this chapter you will die in your sin and where i go you cannot come it is very serious our biggest problem is not darkness in life but darkness in death not shame before people but the judgment of god what does it mean that jesus is the light of the world it means on the one hand that whoever follows jesus will never walk in darkness but how can that be good news actually when i realize that i'm a wrongdoer because on the other hand what else does jesus say in verse 12 end of verse 12 this is wonderful whoever follows me will have the light of life john began his gospel by saying in jesus was life and that life was the light of mankind the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it John will draw his gospel to a close in chapter 20 by saying this is written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Whoever follows Jesus will have the light of life. How can that be? I mean, sometimes I'm like a. The other day I was with my little daughter. We, we went to the garden. We, we turned over some logs to look for bugs and sometimes i'm i'm like a little woodlouse, house uh quite happy under the darkness of my log but if you shine the blazing holiness of god upon me i'd run away sometimes how can i rejoice in the light of jesus the light of life because because jesus the light of the world entered our darkness he chose to be to be blown out like a candle for our wrongdoing, killed so that we might live, put out, extinguished, so that we might light a little flame and begin to shine. But it, Jesus was not put out forever. Friend, fear not the shadows of the day. Fear not the horrors of the night, for the light of the world, once blown out, has been relit. Maybe you say, I do believe in Jesus, but I still feel the darkness, and hope burns very faint. Edward Shilito was a soldier who was groping in the darkness, the thick darkness of World War I. He prayed these words. If we have never sought thee, we seek thee now. Thine eyes burn through the dark, our only stars. We must have sight of thorn pricks on thy brow. We must have thee, O Jesus of the scars. Friends, when we feel darkness in our lives, even then, especially then, we can show the world that any light in our lives comes not from our circumstances, but from Jesus who stepped into darkness for us. Show the world that whatever happens, we still trust he will lead us through the valley of the shadow of death into the glorious light of the resurrected Son. Jesus is the light of the world. What does he mean? He means whoever follows Jesus will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Whoever trusts in Jesus will live because he has been blown out, extinguished. To pay the penalty for our wrongdoing, to grant us a flame of life that will grow to eternal life. But how do we know? Why should we believe him? If I stood on Marlborough High Street with a loudspeaker and I shouted out, 
I am the light of the world. You might call for the doctors or for the police. We've asked first, what does Jesus mean? Now, secondly, why should we believe him? Why should we believe him? And that's exactly what the people asked back in the festival of tents. Look at verse 13, would you? John chapter 8 and verse 13. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. How can you say such things about yourself? The religious leaders ask. Jesus says, well, I of all people should know who I am. It's a fair point, but... Should you really blow your own trumpet like that? And so Jesus says, as it were, look, it's not just me. God the Father bears witness for me too. Why should we believe Jesus? Because God is shining through him. When God appears in the Bible, he appears in blazing light. As the hymn says, immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. And yet, later in John chapter 12, Jesus will say, the one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light. The one who looks at me is seeing God the Father who sent me. This is the big point of the first half of John's gospel. Jesus has come down from heaven to show us God the Father. And who can deny that in the words and works of Jesus, we see the character of God perfectly. Then we see Jesus scaling the heights of miracles and teachings like no other. And yet plumbing the depths of self-sacrificial love like no other. Who in history could hold a lamp up to Jesus? Why should we believe in Jesus? Because God is shining through him. Isn't that how light works? Light shows us the thing which is shining. C.S. Lewis uh, wrote about this, um, like being in a shed. Now, um, here I am in my garden shed. I love my shed. Now, imagine you're in a shed and the doors are closed, the windows are closed. It's totally dark. Except for one beam of light. And there's a little hole in the roof of the shed and a beam of light comes piercing through the darkness, splashing on the floor of your shed. Now, maybe you wonder, is this really light? And you, you walk around it. You try to analyse it scientifically. Is this a beam of light? And you call your friends and look at this. What do you think? You debate with them. Is this a beam of light? Maybe you ask deep philosophical questions. How could this be light when the shed is so dark? What do you need to do? You need to come into the light. Instead of looking at the beam of light, you need to stand in the beam of light. Look up to where it comes from through the hole in the shed. And what will you see? Well, beyond the green leaves, you will see the sun. You won't see the darkness of the shed anymore. You won't even see the beam of light. But you will see where the light comes from. You will see the sun. If Jesus is the light beam, then God the Father is the sun, S-U-N. Why should we believe Jesus? Because God is shining through him. Maybe you're feeling in the dark. Step into that light beam. Come to Jesus. Yes, discuss historical evidence about him. I'd love to have that conversation with you. 
the historical evidence is overwhelming. But above all, choose to believe in Jesus. And then shining through the hole in the roof, you will see God. Lots of us have put our faith in Jesus like that. Maybe there was a time when we weren't sure. We weren't completely sure if his claims were true. But then we chose to put our faith in him and we realised, oh yeah, this is true. And yet maybe we've been a Christian some time and our heads begin to drop. Our eyelids begin to droop. Our faces begin to turn towards the darkness in the shed. Friends, keep looking to Jesus. It's easy, especially in the summer, to drift in our faith. And how much more in the isolation of the online world. Maybe no one knows if we've read the Bible this day, this week, this month. Maybe no one even knows if we've engaged with online church. Recently in my daily Bible readings, I got to the end of a particular section and for a few days I, I stopped and I kind of got out of the habit and drifted. Not intentionally, it just happened. And then after a few days I was jolted back into the sunbeam, thankfully. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It could be just a psalm at bedtime. Just a Bible podcast on the cross trainer. But we've got to look along the sunbeam. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. What did he mean? Whoever believes in me will not walk in darkness, but have the light, the light of life. Why should we believe him? Because we see the Father shining through him. Before we close, what could we say to our friends tomorrow? Suppose your friends say to you, how was your weekend? You might say, oh, it had its ups and downs. But actually, um, in online church, I was really struck by this thing. What would that be for you? In online church, I was really struck by this thing. Take a moment to think about it. Jesus is the light of the world. Whoever believes in me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. <laughs>